will call the uh, meeting of the Wheatley Select Board to order at 6.02 p.m. on Wednesday, April 30th. Um, first item on the agenda is uh, meeting minutes review from March 9th. Do I hear a motion or do I hear? Move to approve the minutes. I would second that. All those in favor, Fred. Aye. Uh, uh, Joyce. <laughs> Aye. Uh, me, yes. All right. Um, vendor and payroll warrants. Anybody have a beef before I, I, I need to go in and sign them tomorrow. So um, anybody, anybody have any comments? No comments for me. No. Nope. Okay, we're good. Um, I will ask for public comment. Oh, we, we do have people from the, the public today. And, and, and uh, if anyone would like to comment on items not listed on this agenda, um, now is your opportunity. Anybody have anything? Nothing? Okay. Uh, we will keep moving on. Um, old business, Brian, let's hear. Oh, okay. what we had some, some write-in public comment though. I'm sorry, say that again, Joyce? There was some write-in co public comment in the, uh, in the meeting materials. Is that something to take now or would that be taken at the end with town administrator updates? I think we take that at town administrator updates. I think public comments are for verbal comments. Yeah, I think it's covered in the administrator updates. Yeah. Okay. So thanks. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think we need to keep me here to, to do yeah. that. So let's talk about the uh, local fiscal recovery funds committee and, and what they are uh, what their work is doing. Yeah, one second. Let me just bring that up, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, one thing we're still trying to figure out is how to. That's not going to allow me to do that. Um, let me not bring it up right now. Let me read. Um, do you have that? Would it help if somebody else shared a screen if uh, with the material from the? Uh, yeah, somebody could share that. Is... Okay. I was trying to set up a second laptop here so I could. The, the challenge we have is that the screen I'm looking at is what's broadcast on 15. So if I'm yeah. trying to look and pull up documents and stuff, it comes in front of the it kind of comes in front of the screen and everybody gets to see all stuff that they don't like. Um, <laughs> Joyce, do you want to do it if I make you close? Um, sure. Do I have uh, permission? I have. Uh, yeah, I can't do screen sharing unless you make me co-host. I think you are co-host now, Joyce. No. Okay. There we go. All right. So there's the meeting materials. That's the thing that we're going to comment on later. Um, yeah. Old there business. We there we go. So at the last meeting, the, the select board had asked the, the coronavirus local fiscal recovery funds committee um, to think about recommendations on the FY23 capital projects that were proposed by the Capital Improvement Planning Committee because um, we really need to make decisions. We, meaning the Finance Committee and Select Board, need to make decisions about how these capital projects will be funded. Um, so we asked the, the committee to meet and um, come back with recommendations as to just these capital projects. Um, and this is what uh, the committee recommended. It met on the March 21st. Um, and it recommended that these items be funded um, with our uh, coronavirus monies. So what they're recommending is um, Whaley Elementary School floor replacement, uh, dishwasher replacement up at the elementary school, town hall automatic door openers, highway department new tractor, new financial management software for the treasure collector, replacement of a fire door um, in the library, and then the purchase of uh, uh, computers at the library for staff and patrons, that would be for computers. Um, so it's a total of $142,000 that they would recommend spending. And uh, what's the balance remaining with what's left there, the 316,000 uh, and some change. So um, I don't know, Fred, do you wanna add something? Uh, uh, the only thing I'd add to that is that the, Capital Improvements Committee considered and gave not a strong recommendation to another item, which was the uh, air conditioning at the schools. 
which has at the elementary school, which I think, Brian, if I remember correctly, we asked for more study from the school before proceeding on. Yeah, I think, or, I, think I, I think there's some um, some clarification that's needed in terms of um, what's actually being proposed and what's what's best for the what's best for the for the school. I think one of the one of the questions that still remains is is whether there's some type of air purification or air cleaning that can happen with these systems instead of just cooling the air. Obviously, uh, air purification and, and filtration and ventilation is going to be a um, is going to be a big focus of of, of how people I think uh, of, of one way we get out of the pandemic or whatever we want to call the stage four now. Um, so it wouldn't make it to me it doesn't make a, a lot of sense, and I think it didn't make a lot of sense to the committee to just cool the air if there's other things that can be done, you yeah. know, for the air quality, not just cool it. So yeah, um, okay, so. I just wanted to clarify why that was not in this recommendation. Uh, and that these items are all of the items that the Capital Improvement Committee has recommended that are not covered by other, uh, by CPA or other funds. So for, forgive me for this question, because it's probably going to be one where people say, well, of course, why didn't you know that? But is this the same money that we were discussing things like closing the Egypt road loop for the water system, or is that a separate pot of money for those larger capital projects? Um, it, it is a good question. Um, it is the same amount of money. It is the same uh, pocket of money. Um, what's changed is in between the, um, the, the initial rule, the initial treasury rule, and the final treasury rule in terms of how these funds could be could be utilized. Uh, the final rule essentially gave um, municipalities a standard deduction of up to ten million dollars for lost revenue. So, if a municipality were to claim lost revenue, then the funds are available for for any general municipal purpose. So, those categories that we were focusing on before. Um, those are also eligible, but it's really opened everything up and we have less than 10 billion. So, um, mm -hmm. really it's, it's any eligible municipal purpose or right. expense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that being said, I, I'm going to, I'm going to voice an opinion that all the things listed here are things that you know, the Capital Projects Committee could easily adopt this year, next year, what have you. They're, they're reasonably priced items that you could see, okay, I, I could see that happening in the not too distant future. If we don't utilize this money for big ticket items like closing that loop, and there were a couple others that we had discussed in previous meetings, probably two months ago, three months ago, whatever it was, I don't, I'm not sure those ever happen. So I, I guess I, there's a part of me that says, you know what, we should utilize that money for things that are going to be a big lift in the future. Because I'm not sure any of these things are a big lift in the future. They're just going to be a lift at some point that we have to deal with. Um, that, that's, that's my gut feeling. Could I ask a clarifying question? Those other, the, the loop on, um, the water system, and I thought there was one other thing we had talked about. Has that already been committed or uh, voted and recommended? And, or does, would that have to come out of the 316,000 that would be remaining at CLRF, RF, sorry, too many R's. <coughs> does my question make sense? Because I know we've talked about it and I thought at one point we recommended it but uh, so I don't know if it's been already accounted for in the tally of how much money remains. No, no, the, um, so where the committee is at in terms of where the committee was at before the last select board meeting was they had solicited a list of project ideas um, so that Egypt mm -hmm. Road closure was on there and there was, I don't know, I think it was a 
page and a half of, of project ideas, Fred, maybe, maybe it was two mm -hmm. and a half. Um, but we really ran into a time crunch with these capital projects. So those kind of, um, the board had asked for, you know, recommendations on the capital projects. Those other, those, all those other projects are still out there on this list that the, that the committee needs to go through. And are they likely to come in at a price that would be covered by the 316,000 that would be remaining? And because they're bigger projects, they're taking longer to figure out cost and so on. <clears throat> but um, are, do we have a ballpark idea of whether this 316,000 would cover those other things that we're thinking about? I don't think it, I don't think it would, it would, yeah, I don't think it would cover those things. Um, if, if we used it all, if, if we didn't spend this 142, so, you know, you're looking at ballpark $470,000. Yeah, yeah, half a million roughly, yeah. yeah. Um, would that amount cover one of those larger projects or are we still short? Everything on that list, um, but my recollection would probably be that it would not. Um, I mean- What is the Egypt Road, um, you know, closing the loop thing projected to cost? I don't think, Fred, I don't think we've seen a cost estimate on that. I no, was thinking, we haven't seen anything on that yet. But that would and cost more than half a million? I mean, maybe it would. I'm just asking. If, if I can, one of the yeah. other things that the committee did talk about with regard to water projects is that they thought that this money should go to projects that affect everybody in town mm. directly. Oh, understood. Yeah, and I, and I get that. But again, when it comes to water quality, again, we're a community. And I think if, you know, your your heart has to go out to people who are who are mm -hmm. perhaps having not the type of water quality that they bargained for or they expected, um, and that it 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 is up to the town to step up to the plate for elements of the town. It, it's okay if, the, if we spend things on money on things that doesn't directly help everybody in town, because at the end of the day, we're a stronger community when we help parts of the town. Um, also, right. but, but do we spend all of the money on something that only benefits part of the town? Yeah, I, 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 I don't have an answer for that, Joyce. I get, I get the question, but I, I do worry that that I, I'm I'm hard pressed to believe that we're going to find the money for those big for for a big ticket item like that for a mm -hmm. fraction of the town when we don't have this type of, of, of huge money. We're always gonna be able to find $5,000 for new library computers or or for mm -hmm. school floor replacement. You know, it, it's, it, it's, 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 it's what is manageable and what's not manageable. And if, the, if a big project that perhaps only benefits part of the town is only truly manageable when we have this type of a windfall well, I, I I guess I think that adds a lot of weight to that to that item. I'm not sure it'll ever happen otherwise. No, I, but I do think we. I, I hear what you're saying, Fred. Um, that 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 is that this money should benefit the least. And and uh, it, well, it. that was just the general consensus of the committee. Yeah. Right. And. And and by the way, the you know use any of these items. Um, not everyone, but the 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 school floor and the dishwasher doesn't help everybody in town. Um, it doesn't impact everybody in town. Management software does. Yep, highway department new tractor, sure. Library floor replacement, kinda, not really I though. Would, no, I would argue it's everybody's elementary school. But it, but yeah, yeah it, it is. It's everybody's elementary school, and uh, when you have kids, you use it directly. When you don't have kids, it's educating your neighbors. Um, yeah. Those are, I, I think, we own that whole school. Everybody in town owns that. That's yeah. clearly something that benefits everybody. It doesn't just benefit one section of town or another. So i I think there, I think there is an argument to be made that elementary school capital items are things that benefit the whole town. Yeah, right. I think there's a distinction between the schools and the water district. Well, but again, water quality does impact everybody in town. Water quality impacts 
every single um, assessed value of, of homes in town. It it impacts so many things in terms of the the livability. No, the I, I don't district. disagree with you. It, it is, but we we have a water district that is it's it has got its own way of funding things, and it may be that they have to raise rates to raise money to do that big project. Maybe there's other grants we can apply for. Um, but that, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to say, I, I really, I hear what Fred's saying about that. I also hear what you're saying, John, about uh, the, the need, and then and the town has stood up and, and helped out with things that benefit uh, the water district in the past. So I wanna acknowledge that as well. Yeah, I, I, again, we, we I don't think there's anything in town that we have turned our backs on, you know, mm -hmm. ever. I think we do a good job of 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 of, of understanding need. Uh, I think we do a good job making sure that no one is no one feels left out in in terms of funding decisions. Um, you know, we 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 spent money on the on on the 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 water district and that merger. That was town money. A lot, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So, no, so, so given that, then it, it doesn't seem to be very selfish that here let's take care of some capital needs that that benefit the whole town. Especially we, we don't even have a hard proposal yet on that loop. What it's gonna, you know, whether these funds would fully cover it. There is a sunset on using these funds, which granted is I think two years, I think end of 2024, they have to be allocated, but we don't know if we'll have a a project that will, you know, has plans and yeah. f full cost estimates even by then. Yeah, I know it seems funny, but 2024, I mean, we could blink and then 2024 is here. So I, and, I think- and, and then we're hurrying to spend these monies it, if that it, project isn't ready for, for funding at that point. And again, I'm not, Joyce, I mean, Joyce and I, neither of us can remember the other project, but it's not just that one project. There were others that-, that Yeah, that that, back when we were thought the money had to be restricted to things like water projects right. and um, other like public health related things. Yeah. Um, um, that's that's why we were focused on those projects more right. so than other things. Um, is the tractor a replacement or is this a, a, a new thing that- It's a replacement. For a 2001 on. tractor that has all kinds of electrical issues for par and parts yeah. that are no longer available. And and why does the town hall need automatic door openers? Oh, for handicap accessibility. Yeah. Okay, I get that. Yeah. Uh, you know, right. yeah. I just don't think it's ever going to happen otherwise. And you know, you don't come into Right. Kind of I, I remember when, when, you know, Joyce will remember, you were on the board when, when the, when the, um, when we, when we um, got the money for, for selling the, um, the tower fees. Oh, no, actually, I was just off the board for that, but yeah. Board. But you, but you, yeah. we all remember the event. And, and I, you know, I remember their first offer was really low and we could not have bought uh, the uh, the <laughs> the library building for their first offer, but I but, wasn't there for the final offer. No, but we knew that big money needed to be spent on things that wouldn't have ha would not happen otherwise. Yeah, that's yeah. what he's going back to. It. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So can I ask one other uh, question related to this? Um, oh, and that would be um, the capital improvement committee, are they going to be recommending other capital projects as well to come out of other, uh, I mean, if these CLFRF monies weren't available, are they also considering other projects for kind of the normal budget? Um, Actually, e everything else that the capital improvement committee considered would either come out of this or one of the other, or CPA funds. I'm just looking. Oh, okay. My list. Okay. Um, so they're they're trying not to spend free cash or uh, uh, other. Right. This, uh, there's a new police cruiser that's going to come out of the vehicle stabilization fund. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, but essentially, the reason to do this out of this money is mm -hmm. that the budget is looking like it's going to have a big hit, particularly from the schools, and trying to keep the tax increase down by mm -hmm. <laughs> keeping the free cash in place, possibly for uh, yeah. you know, subsidizing yeah. the or alleviating a tax increase. And if we were to spend roughly the same amount, call it 150,000 um, next year and the next year, this is sort of like dividing that uh, roughly 450,000 into three blobs. What's the correct word? Uh, tranches, whatever the right word is. Yep. And, and it would enable us to do a reasonable, reasonable amount of capital spending without having to raise more taxes. So in the spirit of revenues lost, we're able to still maintain capital expenditures uh, in the in this in the situation where, where tax money is maybe less available for us. Right. I would I would say if these are not funded in this way, there's a fair chance that some of these would have to get pushed off into next year year after that because of the tax increase implications. And, and these were all things that were considered important or, I don't know, mm -hmm. urgent, but things that needed to be done from the list of capital projects that that committee was given. Mm -hmm. the, none of, none of the, they, the, the divisions are into A, B, and C of importance. And these were all given a importance. What were some of the C important importance? Uh, there was only actually only one this year, and that was actually the fence replacement of the cemetery, but that's coming out of CPA funds. Mm. Uh, you said A, was, is there some B's? There was one, but actually, I'm sorry, the replacing the computers for the library was a B. Mm. The another B was a uh, dump truck and plow for the highway department and that's been pushed off to next year. Okay, I mean, mm -hmm. okay, let's, um, mm -hmm. any, any other conversation before I would ask for a motion? Uh, just say, uh, so we want a motion, the motion is basically whether we support these or not. Um, and then well, what, the, the actually whether we committee? authorize spending this money on these projects. Oh, so we, we the like authority to, to spend this money is our authority, our not town authority. meeting. Okay, understood. So I, I would move that we authorize the spending of CLFRF funds totaling $142,000 for the seven projects listed. I will second that. All those in favor, Fred? Yes. Joyce? Aye. Me, fine. Okay. Uh, I gotta get rid of the full screen here um, and go to the next item on the agenda, which is to discuss Dickinson Hill Road, um, uh, op opening back up parts of it. Brian? Yeah, um, Joyce, do you mind if I take over screen share? I got my laptop up. Sure, okay. Nice. There nice you second. go. Oh, um, okay. you look like mission control there, Brian. You hey, really do. Look at you. Um, let's let's um, Sue is here. Let's 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 so that Sue doesn't. Have, I mean, yes, yeah, Sue. I admit that we like an audience, um, <laughs> and we could you know take advantage of this situation so we have people actually paying attention to this, um, but. Um, we will we will move you up we on the agenda. and uh, and and so tell us what you got. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Yep. Yes. Um, I just am here for the uh, special permit for my race on Mother's Day. Um, I think that's why I'm here, right, Amy? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. What the agenda says. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, and I'm going to run it the same way I did three years ago, um, you know, the exact same setup, 
going to have Hitchcock is going to be there um, at the finish line. It's going to be all uh, fenced off. We're going to have two people at the gate giving either a bracelet or marking their hand. We haven't really gotten that far yet. Um, just because three years ago when we did it, the weather was so bad. Nobody went in for beer anyway. Um, so it was a real flop. So, um, oh, man. so we, we do, we do have it all separate. I'm, I'm thrilled they're coming back because last time was so bad. Um, so, um, yeah, we're going to keep that separate from all of our, um, you know, all of the finish activities. It'll be a whole separate, you have to be 21 to get in that fenced in area. You have to keep your beer in that area, drink your beer in that area. Um, and, and that's pretty much it. Okay. So no changes. No changes, yeah. except it's three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> we're all three years older. And, and, and we're all a little more gray. <laughs> uh, I, I was there a while ago. Um, so um, I, I don't have any questions. Anybody else? No, no questions. No, we just need to move to approve this application. Yep, go ahead. I would yes, move so. that we approve this application. Second. All those in favor, Joyce? Aye. Fred? Yes. Me, yes. You're all set, Sue. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you. You can stick around. We'll take public comment. I, I would, but I'm in my car and my phone is going to die. So. Oh, okay. All <laughs> thank right. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. All right. Now we'll go back to Dickinson Hill Road. So, so just to be clear, that was the approval of the uh, of the special event, the one-day liquor license, right? The yes. special Perfect. event, yes. Yes. Yeah. And then you're also fine, obviously, with the event happening, so... With the uh, event happening, yes. Yeah, I, I assume I voted on both, but I apologize if I... Yeah, if we need to, to move a second thing, then I'm happy to move. Yeah, I guess we I guess maybe move the the approval of the event itself. We had all the department heads sign off and everybody's aware of it, so... Okay, um, so we've already approved the event permit application, uh, and so, so for the event permit, I, I, um, I move we approve the event going forward. Second. All those in favor, Joyce. Aye. Brad. Yes. Me, yep. Yeah. Great, and we have we have a serve safe, we have uh, the insurance that's required by the regulation, so everything's all set as you saw in the packet, so. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I love it when people have their, what my sister-in-law would call poop in a group, and these people clearly know what they're doing. Yeah, they've always run a good uh, a good event. Yeah, and we appreciate it too because yeah. it's a lot less running around and chasing people like we usually do for these kind of events. Yeah. All right. Now that we've made Keith wait longer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, uh, the board had received this letter, um, and we had tabled it at the last discussion because, believe it or not, I think Keith was out plowing. Um, Winter was not there yeah. on the past. Um, so this is a letter from um, former resident on Dickinson Hill Road asking that the that the road be um, essentially um, relayed out, uh, you know, a certain distance to their, I assume it's to their drive, well, to their house, essentially, to their driveway. Um, and I just want to, I'm, I'm going to switch to a map that I think will, will make this a little bit clearer. Um, yeah, the map was in the packet, wasn't it? Yeah. So my understanding, and, and Keith can correct me if I'm wrong, we're, we're looking at we're looking at Dickinson Hill Road right here. This is Dickinson Hill Road. My understanding is that the road was legally discontinued from this point um, mm. and so on. Um, I guess that's north. So. From this point, it's Dickinson Hill Road. Uh, from this point, it's not a legal road. It's a, it's a legally discontinued road is our understanding. Mm -hmm. Legally discontinued roads cannot provide frontage for building lots under the zoning bylaw. Um, so there's a house of building, there's a house here um, and a residence. And so essentially what we have here is that somebody has an easement, which would essentially be an easement to access this house. Um, and I, my understanding is that the request would be that the road be 
continued or relayed out and the town would um, resume maintenance of the road and responsibility for the road up to a point where, where wherever, you know, wherever we just, wherever it's decided, wherever town meeting decides to, 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 to approve the, the relay of the road. Um, so that's essentially what the request is. It's in my conversations with, with the, the person who wrote the letter, it's, you know, they were, they were maintaining this, this stretch and there's other lots that are um, up here, you know, all along the road that, that, that the lots exist and they have, they have access to their lots through the, through this uh, discontinued road, which is technically an easement. Uh, but there's no, there's no legal requirement that, that this homeowner maintain, you know, this portion of the road. Um, they'll, if they need to maintain it for access for themselves, they can do that. Um, but there's no legal obligation that they continue to do that. So this is essentially, it's, it's essentially, it's not the same as a shared driveway in, in terms of how we think about it, but it's, it acts like it. Um, you know, if, if this person uses this driveway to get here, there's people who have lots further up here who are probably using that same, you know, mm -hmm. same stretch of discontinued road. Um, mm -hmm. So the first question that, that I guess I had when I was talking with Keith about it was sort of how does, how does it happen, right? How do you build a house that doesn't have frontage? Um, and we're not entirely sure about this, but um, it's pretty. We're, we're pretty certain looking at this um, this A and R plan or or plan of land, which which curiously isn't signed, um, but it's recorded, which makes me have a couple questions. But mm. the frontage essentially for this lot here is this two hundred feet right here, and it, I won't even call it a oh. flag, but it's a lot. Um, so there's 200 feet here, and then this parcel A comes all the way up here, right? It connects with parcel B, and then presumably this was, and the, the deeds show this, that this A, A, B, and C made one lot. Oh, so they basically went and purchased, purchased maybe whatever the agreement was, all yep. of that so that they can have this frontage. And this is the frontage that counted for a house that's located, I don't know, somewhere roughly over here. Have I got that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, now, a year later, the deeds show that parcel A and parcel B were sold back um, to I believe it, who, whoever sold the parcels in the first place. Um, yes, B. Brian, when so was this? It's, that's our best understanding looking at the, at the, the, the records and the registry, how that lot at frontage hey. to build. What years? Hey. What years? Um, it was 87 and it was 87. I think it was 87 and then they were deeded back in 89 or the other way around. I think it was, it was late eighties. Late eighties. Yeah. This has been for, this is a 40 year old problem. Oh, they created it themselves though, kind of. Yeah, they created it themselves by selling the land back. Well, it was, and it was by the way, it, I, my guess is, and forgive me if I'm wrong, but a lay person would look at this and say that the, 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 the sale, the back selling, the sale, the, the selling back was all part of the conversation from the beginning. Yeah, I would think that this was all part of one plan. Exactly, exactly. This was a way to get around reality. Mm. I could be wrong and I apologize if I am, but I don't, I can't come up to, with any other any other solution other than that that this was part of their plan no i can't conceive that the person who owns the property around which parcels a and b snake would want their property surrounded by 
someone else's property unless they knew they were getting it back. Right. Yeah. And and how the heck did this become a parcel? Parcel A and parcel B. I mean, who decides what's going to be a parcel? And I just you just don't see. I mean, you see flag lots. This isn't a flag. This is like a I don't know, a lasso lot. It's a snake. <laughs> it's a, <laughs> is it snake. CBA? It's a snake lot. Is it's it a CBA? snake lot. Yeah, I mean, like who who the heck approved that? This I, I thought it was curious. B. I, I thought it was curious that there, that there are no signatures on this recorded plan. Um, this, this doesn't smell good. But yeah. um, I, I mean, I, I think. I mean, how it's created is because the town probably doesn't have a, a what's what's called a minimum lot width. Um, some zoning bylaws will have that, which says, you know, your property can't be your lot <coughs> any narrower than X amount of feet, right? Um, yeah. I don't know what this is. Maybe it's fifty. Um, but it, all, it also seems to come in under a a and R uh, approval, not required. That's what the plan said. Right. The plan says that, but it's not, it's not signed, which is, is strange. Um, so, I mean, at this point we could ask for clarification about, I, I don't really know. I, maybe Keith has thoughts. Um, Cause I, my, like my question would be why the request wasn't to extend the legal road at that time why they went through this bypass instead of getting the, le the road legalized it was, there it must was, have been a reason it was probably easier Fred to do it this way quicker quicker simpler don't have to go to town meeting <laughs> yep yeah are the are the locks beyond this one house developable or is it all a bunch of uh, uh, all a bunch of rock ledge? Oh, as you go further past that property, um, it, there are potential building lots. Sure, um, it depends on the amount of money you want to spend to build a road. It, but yes, in theory, sure. But there's no houses further up. No, no um, permanent residents. There's camps out there. By camps, you mean like hunting camps, Keith? Yeah, livable camps. So am I right that, the, but, but so it's not, so you could build a house, it's not a bunch of rock. Correct. Yeah. And, and I mean, another thing that would come into play if just looking at all the options and that is if you do extend the town layout further down, number one, it does a few things. Um, the property owner that's on the all towards the bottom where the date of 1987 is that property owner gains a tremendous amount of more value to their property because all of a sudden they have a lot more building lots that they don't right now. Um, and then the property that's to the to the north gains property value too because now they have building lots so it it changes, it changes a lot of things. Um, I, I guess another thing that I would say that if it was to be ever considered, I feel it would need to be addressed similar to how other roads that have been allowed to be done in town, for instance, subdivisions. The, the, the applicant needs to bring it up to the standard that the town would accept it. Um, a similar situation happened on Poplar Hill Road where Smith College donated money to the town of Waitley to upgrade the road. And we took care of that extension up there so that we could, you know, clean that up where that was. So there's been um, numerous subdivisions. And in a sense, I don't see that the town should have to immediately go in and make the improvements to the point where it is maintainable by us. Right now it's very 
After you go past the words discontinued, it gets very narrow. Mm -hmm. Only one vehicle can be fit there at any point in time. So if it was to be widened to two lanes, that's an expense that should be, in my mind, incurred by the applicant prior to the town accepting it. Yeah. Is it the same owner um, of that one? I assume the house, the, 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 the lot with the house, the lot that initiated or was part of the the snake is it the same is it the same owner yeah i mean it was all it's all originally family land um the you know the applicant it was that property was um the sister of the other landowner's and, and then the other one that's, as you see there in writing, is not the current owner, but Robert Dunbar. Again, that property was, that was all family land. So. Um, you say family land, you mean the. Brothers, sisters. Family? Brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and I, I never knew until certainly I started looking into this with Brian that that the frontage was sold back to the original owner a year later. I didn't know that because it was all done very silently. Uh, yeah. Mm. You know, th these people are going, and again, more power to them. I mean, I, it's, 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 it's the great American way. If you can figure out a way to increase the value of, of your asset, um, then, then you should, you should do it. But, it, it, it strikes me that they're looking for the town to pick up the tab on on their mm -hmm. ability to increase their value, their, their, right. their, 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 their property value. And if it's the same family who was in this before, you know, they, they, they created the, I mean, I assume they probably want yeah. to sell this, this house too. And it's very difficult to sell that house with this kind of a setup. And if you, and never mind the other the other property lots. If we were to do this, that one lot with the current house increases in value. It, it increases the number of people who will be interested. <laughs> excuse me, interested in buying the house out of the gate. Yeah. Um, I what might seem like an odd question, but what would have been the right way for these property owners to have gone about the process? of making this lot you know, legally able to have a house with proper frontage without having to do this little snaky thing. Like what, what was their alternative? The way I see yeah. that, the alternative would have been to come to the town and, and say that if we improve the road to your standards, will you continue it? Mm or move the discontinuance line on to that new location that they were requesting. Okay. So kind of like when someone puts in the new development, like that one that's on River Road, either Bichkowski Circle or the other one that's further south, they built the road to a standard already. And then when the town accepted it, it was already in good shape. And it was really, we're only taking on the maintenance cost. If we were Correct. to do this here, we would be taking on both the getting the road in shape and the maintenance cost. So this would be sort of unprecedented in that sense, right? To say, oh, well, we're gonna take on that cost of, of maintaining that road. Um, so, okay. So, I, okay, I just wanna make sure that, I mean, there is an alternative for this landowner if they were to actually improve the road to whatever distance they they really want, um, then it would be something that would be kind of more apples to apples comparison with other roads that we've taken from discontinued to having the town maintain. Is that a, a reasonable way to interpret this? Uh, that's, I would agree with you. However, if I was the applicant, I want a little bit, you know, if possible, I would want a little bit of assurance that if they spent their money to improve it, 
there mm-hmm. would be a better possibility, you know, the possibility mm-hmm. is pretty strong that, that Tom would accept it. Mm-hmm. But I mean, mm-hmm. for that matter, you know, that's another thing. When you take the Pine Plain, Pine Plain Estates off of Long mm-hmm. Plain Road, there's no, there's real no, no 100% assurance that the town would ever accept it. We did, the town did accept it. But mm-hmm. at the same point in time, that's, that's the, in a sense, the risk that the developer takes on. Yeah. But I, I, I think the assurance would be that in the past, when the select board and whichever other committees recommend something at town meeting, people actually take that seriously. And if we would say that, hey, we don't get to vote at town meeting other than our own single vote, but you know, if you were if you were on par with other developers who have done this before, we would certainly be in a position where we could recommend it. Whereas here, I don't feel like I'm in a position to recommend this on town floor me- town meeting floor. Does that? I mean, I feel like that's a logical sort of point of view to take here. Does that make sense to my colleagues? Yeah. Well, what I'd like to know is. We, you know, we've got a handwritten note asking for an extension. Do we know how many feet extension we're actually looking at and how much it would cost per foot to improve that to up to town standards? No, there's been nothing done that. I mean, just, just the... Um... I can't even imagine just the the lawyer and legal fees it would take to to draft the um, the new the new layout. There's a lot of money just in that alone. You know, I can't I can't see even thinking of approving this without having a firm idea of what it's going to cost us oh. to do the approval. It's it's clearly in my mind. And my, I have a simple mind, I get it. But it's clearly an ability to um, create development opportunities. Or it, it can, I, don't, I don't believe it's just ease, but it, it clearly gives the opportunity for development, de- development abilities. Uh, and I don't think the town should shoulder that cost. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I don't think the town should shoulder the cost. And at the very least, I think we have to know what the cost is to negotiate with the owners to cover that cost. Right. And obviously someone's going to have to put some money down to find out what that cost will be in terms of engineering and all that kind of stuff. And I don't think that should be the town putting that money down. I, 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 I agree. If there were other reasons for the town to is recontinue a word um, to, 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 make this road a road again then that's great but i don't i i don't see it right now there's no there's no emer- there's no emergency vehicle issue they can access it you know they, they it's not a two lane road but it, it's not like you know I, I, keith maybe you can tell us because from your vantage point as as a volunteer firefighter could a fire truck get up there yeah again it's it's wide enough to get a single vehicle through there However, again, once you, if we were to accept it and not require it to be wider in two lanes, then if, as soon as a vehicle goes off into the ditches that are on each side of it, you know, the town's somewhat liable because right. they're going to say, well, geez, if it was like a road should be, they would have been able to pass. But um, no, I, I get that. I'm just saying that 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 people can't claim that that they they, they that an ambulance is inaccessible or a fire truck is you know if, if there was an emergency we can access that property. Correct. A, a fire yeah. truck can still get down there. Okay. Yeah, I, I I'm I think we're all in agreement here, you guys personally. But tell me if I'm misunderstanding, misreading something. Yeah, I would take no action on this. I would take no action on this either. Okay, so we'll leave it alone, and we will. Um, I mean, if the if the property owner or the owners who benefit from this want to come to the town with a more concrete proposal, where they cover the costs of 
and mm-hmm. yeah, you know, uh, of yeah. what's involved. I, I, I would be let, willing let, to let them like any other developer. Right? right, exactly. Exactly. Just like any other development. Okay, we'll move on then. Um, um, discussing the installation of a generator at the town offices, speaking of having just moved up the CLF RF spending stuff, but what do we got, Brian? Um, Keith, you want to talk about this or you want me to? I, I'm just looking to, you know, the, the topic came up. We got town meeting approval mm-hmm. last year to purchase the generator. And then the topic sort of got put on hold because they wanted what the discussion was to look into um, solar aspect of things. And, and so, uh, you know, we have money approved by town meeting to do it, this project. And I want to know, I'm looking for direction as to whether I continue with this project as it was approved at town meeting or what to do. Well, it, it, I mean, I would love to have it connected somehow with solar or have the potential to have it connected or upgraded to solar, but it did get approved at town meeting. So I, mm. you know, I, I'm not sure that we have it within our. Well, we, we certainly can ha- have some flexibility on the timeline. It doesn't have to be spent within that fiscal year. And I'd really like to see, I mean, they were prioritizing solar projects on the grants that we did apply for. So if we can put that money back in the general fund or the free cash, wherever it would end up, that would be great. The nice thing about the solar batteries is that if the grid goes down, it still keeps charging with our solar panels. So it's not clear that you need um, a CO2 generating system where you're using oil or natural gas or whatever the fuel is. So if we can put this off for a year and hear from this grant first, then I think, um, you know, we have a good chance of doing something that everybody wants, which is to get off carbon-based fuels and take care of our backup power needs. Um, and, and, and the grant includes battery backup, correct? Yes. That's what I would call. Yeah. And I see Hannah nodding her head. Well, because uh, that's obviously a critical piece to mm. the generator. Yeah. The visibility of it. So, Brian, there's no there's no sunsetting of these funds. The funds have been appropriated, but simply not spent yet. So. Correct. Yeah. No, so I, they, I, they they can just sit in abeyance until we find out about this potential grant. Right. And and when's that going to be, Hannah? we know? Yeah, so um, the due date for the grant uh, application is in June. I think that we'll probably hear back from MVP um, maybe like late summer, early fall about whether or not we receive the grant. Okay, and if we don't get it, then we can revisit this. Yeah, right. Yeah. It sounds like a six month delay. Yeah. Okay, Keith. Okay, like I say, if that's your choice, I, I, I will hold off. I just was looking for a directive because we're going to be start doing work where I will have be pouring concrete. And if I was to pour the pad, if we're wanting to move forward with it, you know, I'm not sure at the moment what the timeline is to obtain the generator, but I'm sure I'm sure it's gonna have a little bit more of a lead time. So I just wanted to to get it ordered and get it in the in the queue and get it done. But if, if you ask are telling me to hold off, then that's what I will do. Okay. Yeah, I think that's the sentiment. Everybody good with that, Fred? Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, we already did the cancer connection with Sue, liquor license with Sue, Green Communities and Complete Neighborhood Partnership. I assume this is a Hannah Davis item. That's me, yep. Um, So we've got a couple of grants coming up. Um, The first one is Green Communities. Uh, That's one of the big grants that we do every year. Um, In an energy audit provided by UMass in 2019, they identified insulating Waitley Elementary School as a priority project um, that 
I think it kind of counts as low hanging fruit in that once we insulate the elementary school, any further electrification wow. upgrades will benefit um, the school and energy won't be wasted as we're using them. We'll make sure that, you know, the school is insulated and the envelope is completed as much as possible. Um, <clears throat> so I've been in contact with a contractor to look at insulation. It's gonna cost approximately $25,000 if you go with a contractor, um, which is well within the funding limits. And um, I think that the, he didn't offer a return on investment, but I believe my best guess is that it is well below the hundred years or so that spray foam insulation professionals say that the return on investment period is, or rather, yeah, I mean the um, like window of functionality for spray foam installation. Um, so I just need the select board's approval to continue on with um, insulating the elementary school if that's uh, the direction that you choose. Um, otherwise we have some Eversource folks coming to do another energy audit so that they can give us utility incentives um, and they might provide other project ideas as well. That's coming up early next week. I'm, I'm trying to remember, and Brian can help me with this hopefully. When we did that, when we had the UMass audit, River, I forget River's last name. Oh, yeah. Um, it seemed like we couldn't move forward because of timing on different, different grant opportunities and, and it just wasn't lining up. But there was a, an awful lot of other recommendations from what I heard was, was, was incredibly intuitive upgrades in terms of six um, compartments to a heating ventilation system as opposed to three. And mm -hmm. again, I'm gonna butcher it if I try to explain it that much in greater detail, but it strikes me that we should be not looking at just, and I'm not against the insulation stuff, but I, I wanna look at the whole recommendation because it was gonna increase the efficiency of the school and saved so much money and carbon and all that. And it just seems to, yeah, sure, probably COVID got in the way and a lot of other things, but how do we how do we breathe new life into, into that entire package to see what we can do as opposed to just the piecemeal? Um, that's an awesome question. So, I mean, I think that our biggest limitation is funding and procurement. Um, my guess is that I, I mean, I wasn't there, so I'm not sure exactly what happened, but um, the maximum funding amount that you can receive from this grant is $200,000. Um, and for any energy efficiency measures, you can use 25A to kind of avoid procurement. Um, and as long as you keep projects under $100,000 and um, make sure that they're energy efficiency projects, you don't have to go, go up to bed. Um, I'm wondering if that might've been something that stalled the projects or might have been what was affecting the timeline, but I'm not entirely sure because that would mean that you would have to break things up into less than $100,000 chunks in order to complete the projects. Yeah, I, I just don't, forgive me, I just don't recall the, the nuances I don't either. paperwork um, in, our, in our archives that can, that can revitalize our memories a little bit. Yeah, so I'm happy to- Really cool stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was an awesome audit, um, some really interesting project ideas. Um, and I'm happy to revisit that and maybe bring up some more project ideas if the select board would like, um, if you're interested. So it, it's also not limiting. Like we can apply for multiple different types of projects and green communities might say, well, we'll fund these, but not these. Um, and we can go from there. There are also mm -hmm. prescriptive projects that they're offering, um, one of which is for electric vehicles. Um, the one thing to keep in mind with that is that the timeline is kind of extended um, and we can't apply to mass EVIP if we apply to green communities for this specific electric vehicle replacement. I'm thinking about the cruiser for the police. Well, obviously that's, that's, that, that needs to be a priority as well. But I also wonder whether it was because we weren't MVP yet, whether we were trying to combine grant funds oh. and, MVP and green communities. And yeah. Stuff. And I think some of this is MVP um, poten po uh, potential, has MVP potential. So if you could look into all three of those things, because we don't want to kick the can down the road on the on the electric vehicles either for all departments, let alone just the police. Yeah, of course. Um, that sounds great. So 
are you guys interested in continuing with the installation project in addition to other projects or would you like me to focus my attention more on other projects? From my perspective, and I want to hear, you know, other people, but I, I have no problem doing the installation as it, as long as it doesn't taking that action doesn't mess up other parts of that of those audit recommendations. Where if you do X, you can no longer do Y, um, because I'm not sure that the installation you're talking about those procedures were part of this original audit assessment. Um, so, from my perspective, yes. As long as, it, as long as we know it doesn't close other doors that were discussed three years ago. Okay. Joyce and Fred, do you I think, have I think I'd, I'd, I'd agree with that, that, that. I think you're right that insulation should be low hanging fruit unless it cuts off something else, which I think I, it, it could be done in such a way that it does not cut off some other possible avenues for energy conservation. And I'll agree with you on that. and defer on other things because I wasn't here three years ago to, to know what all those discussions were. Yeah, and, and, and Hannah, Paul Newland might have some memory banks that Joyce and I lack because mm -hmm. he, was, he, was, he was very involved yeah. in, in, right. in, in that piece. Um, yeah. And still on the energy committee, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, that sounds great. He just reached out to me about um, energy efficiency measures so I can just hop on that chain. That sounds awesome. That, that'd be great because because I know there were some issues around the ceiling at the elementary school and the difference between the gym and the rest of the building and I, you know it, so Paul's gonna have a better awareness and, and and I'm sure Brian has some archives that you can uh, pour over when you have a, a couple minutes and th this may also end up tying into that air conditioning request from the school. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I would really love to see that be mini splits so that you can actually take some of the heating load off and we can start shifting our heating towards electricity rather than uh, uh, maintaining 100% fossil fuel. And, and, and you know, it's interesting you guys both mentioned that because, and, and I don't think it's wishful memory on my part, that air coolant, non-air conditioned, created air cooling was a part of this system that they were talking about because of the flow. And again, I, Hannah, you know, but I, but I think there was something there as well that it would, it would decrease the, the heat. I don't know whether it was like, I, I, I don't know. I, I, you're right. And there was, there was different components of the, of that UMass study. One of them was building off of, one of them was mechanicals. And I, I think you're talking about like heat exchangers, right? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. It was talking about variable, uh, variable drives and some of the air handler units. And then there was talks about replacing the boilers. And I think one of the, one of the requirements of the green communities grant is that we have to address building off of issues first. So right before the pandemic hit, we had quotes, and they turned out to be outrageous quotes for a spray foaming the underside of the of the school roof, right? The, mm -hmm. the gym, you're right, the gym was kind of a separate structure they were dealing with, but it ended up coming in at, at, at over half a million dollars for the entire roof, which was um, mm -hmm. a bunch for the Green Communities Grant. So then the pandemic hit, and so we're trying to pick up the pieces of that. Um, so Hannah, there may be some some aspects, uh, mechanical aspects of that of that audit we could we could look at. Um, but Jonathan, we also met with Green Communities and somebody in Michael Sullivan, I think, at the town offices here, and they were encouraging us to maybe even think about moving the heating system to electronic, right, um, or or some type of heating system that 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 was used electricity instead of natural gas, but I don't remember that meeting too clearly. Yeah. yeah, and I think it also folded into the to the concept around putting slapping solar up on, on, on the on the roof so mm -hmm. that you know you're generating the electricity um, on on site, you know, and again it gets to the battery backup and all that kind of stuff. And so yeah. it'd be a really cool project, Hannah, but it's it's multi-dimensional and is going to take a better mind than mine. It sounds awesome and complicated mm -hmm. and like something that I'm totally willing to look into. Okay, that'd be cool. Well, so, it's a good thing we have Hannah's mind on our side. 
<laughs> That's so nice of you. Thank you. <laughs> if you can figure this out, you'll be a superstar. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> um, uh, nine, chapter 90 project requests. Um, actually, there's one more grant that I was hoping um, I might be able to oh. get your approval for. Um, <laughs> so we have the opportunity to participate in a regional application for a grant called the Complete Neighborhoods Partnership. Um, Greenfield is taking the lead on this application, Irving, Montague, Deerfield, um, and hopefully Waitley are also participating in this. Um, it offers primarily technical assistance for Mass Housing Partnership to develop housing in the town um, and actually other types of technical assistance too. So, um, and then if we are recommended for specific like shovel ready housing projects, they will offer capital funding to fund those projects. Um, it requires not a lot of uh, time input on behalf of staff. I would be happy to act as the point person for the potential benefit of, um, I think some pretty extensive knowledge and technical assistance for the town. Um, mm -hmm. So if this is something that you're interested in participating in, um, first, I need a vote from the board. Then I'm hoping that I have a neighborhood in mind, but if there are any other specific neighborhoods that you would like to focus on, I'd love to hear about it. Um, the type of assistance that we're most interested in. And then um, we need to provide a letter of support from the select board. I've included a draft text that was originally drafted by the town. Oh, Orange is also participating. Um, and this draft text is drafted by uh, representatives from Orange, but I've adjusted it for the town of Wheatley. As long as the Capulets don't mind that Montague's involved, then I don't think it, um, I think it's all good. Sounds good. Cool. Awesome. <coughs> um, so I think we might, Brian, we might I'm not sure, it. but I think we might need an official vote. An official vote? Sure, all right. Yeah. I think okay. Okay, well, I move we vote in favor of participating in this grant. Second. All those in favor, Joyce. Aye. Fred. Yes. Me, yes. All set. Awesome. Great. The other, the other parts don't seem to require a vote. I, no, I, I don't think, think that they do. Um, I think we have a I consensus just... on the neighborhood. We like that. Cool. Or I should say, I like that. Maybe I don't speak <laughs> for everybody else. Um, it seems like you have under control what's the right kind of assistance to ask for at this point. Mm -hmm. And you put it on the table and I'll sign it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> that I mean, does that summarize what anybody else is thinking? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Is it all right with you guys if I fill in uh, specific uh, details about the Exit 35 neighborhood in the letter of support for you to sign? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Then I will fill that in and I will have it ready. Um, it needs to be, the letter needs to be turned in by April 4th. Um, mm -hmm. So it'll be a relatively quick turnaround for the signature. Um, so that's Is just all three of us in or just me? Just you. Okay. Love me. <laughs> yes, we need the warrant to sign tomorrow if you're around. Love me. In a letter. Okay. Yeah, I'm around. <laughs> all right, let's go to chapter 90, Keith. Okay, I just wanted to go over um, my chapter 90, my balance of where we're at and go through the projects that I'm going to be proposing for this, this coming summer. Um, presently, we have a balance of around $280,000. I'm anticipating um, a supplemental budget from the governor and that should be somewhere around $71,000, $72,000. Going with the FY23 allotment that we get every year, um, adding that all up together, that'll put us somewhere around $350,000 in the available funds going into this summer. Um, the first and most important one I have at the moment, highest priority, is not a very expensive one, but it's River Road in the area of Chang Farm, on the opposite side of Chang Farm, there's a culvert that has um, been failing and is continuing to deteriorate and now is um, impacting the access road that farmers use to get down there. So I need to do a notice of intent with Conservation Commission 
and and then re, and then replace the culvert that goes across the road. So that project is a, just a little over ten thousand dollars, ten thousand five hundred. Um, the next project that I have on my list is River Road to do um, continuing crack sealing, which we've been working on doing crack sealing on that. Last year we did some, and this will continue it going north up to the Deerfield Town Line. Um, and that estimate on that is $40,000. And then the third project I have um, is Haydenville Road to do some leveling and then to reseal it. And that, when I say leveling, filling in some of the ruts. Um, if anybody's traveled that lately, they, the, they can see that the pavement is starting to ravel and deteriorate on Haydenville Road from the Waitley and out towards um, Masterson Road. And if we don't nip it now and nip it in the bud, it's gonna continue to deteriorate and the cost to repair it will just get more, more expensive than it is now to keep it in pretty decent shape. So um, that is, that's a fairly expensive project. That's gonna be um, around $155,000 to do that portion. Um, moving on to my priority list. The next thing I have is, um, is to purchase some more um, equipment for us to use for our excavator. Um, and that is uh, an additional bucket that can be used for, for cleaning out ditches. It's a V-shaped bucket. It's a specialized bucket that works good for cleaning ditches to make it more efficient when you need to do ditch work. And also a grapple, which is like thinking of it as looking like a, a logging truck type of grapple that can go on the end of the excavator, which can operate to, to move um, trees and things like that in storm, when storm damages. It, when you're working on steep slopes and over the bank, the excavator can reach and grab this stuff without having to send people, our employees down the steep bank, try and hook chains and things like that up, which is just another hazard where we can get it, have an injury. So um, those that, that equipment um, is about 14,000. The next thing that on my list, next priority is to chip seal Dickinson Hill Road and Masterson Road. And that's around $20,000. And the last thing that I'd like to do this year under with chapter 90 is on Fairview Way. Um, as most of us know that when, especially in the winter time, and it happened this year when we have frozen ground, the, the retention basin that is to the north on Fairview Way, the ground is frozen and the intersection of Fairview Way and Sandy Lane floods. This year, the, the water was in the road during the, you know, the winter rainstorm for multiple days. And it was almost to the point where it's, it was too deep for small vehicles to drive through. No one that I'm aware of it had any issues of it, but the road floods. And so we're looking at, or I'm looking at to make improvements in the in that detention basin to put in structures that will allow the water in the winter time to absorb into the ground so that it won't, right now, once the ground freezes, the water sits in there like a bathtub because the ground's frozen and it can't set, it can't soak into the ground like it does in the summer months. So that project is um, not very expensive. That's only around $10,000. So when I add up all the, all the projects that adds up to about 250 to 260,000, which will leave me with just about a hundred thousand dollars in, in reserves for something that may still come up. Um, as we know that there's still some other projects environmental wise going on with our, with some more culvert grants. And if we need to, um, I'll still have a reserve, you know, I'm trying to be pretty conservative and not, not not allocate at all at this point in time. So I'd like to hold on to at least $100,000 for something that's not yeah. expected. That's good planning, and just yeah. match or whatever. You know, Keith, when, when, you, when you mentioned Fairview and Sandy Lane, I, I thought you were gonna 
make me fall out of my chair and tell me that DDIC has allowed us to connect the roads between the industrial parks and, uh, the, right. and that DDIC might actually grow up someday. But I didn't say that. Um, and Chris, I didn't say that. You clearly didn't say that. No, I didn't hear anything. But um, but I guess you didn't hear any, any word on, on connecting the roads. So I, I'm going to live this way. Um, so I think it's great. You guys? Yeah. So just to elaborate, <clears throat> I will be working up um, project requests. And when I, I will let Brian know to let you know when the signature pay, you know, application is all there in the town office for you to stop in and sign. Okay. Do you want them to approve the River Road one so that that way it's approved and whenever you get it ready, they can sign it? Because that one's pressing, right? Yes, that's, I mean, it, I, I don't know if you want to, how you want to handle it, but. I would not, um, I, I would not want to put a delay on that since that seems to be something that's rather urgent and with yeah. it's going to, I mean, it's going to be the rainy season here soon. So um, if you need a special vote on that one, I'd be happy to make the motion to uh, go ahead with that uh, culvert project that you described kind of at the beginning of this discussion. On River Road. On River Road. Yeah. Okay. Do I, hear I would second? second that. All those in favor, Joyce. Aye. Fred. Yes. Me. Yes. Okay. okay, thank you. And and do do you need the others soon or I mean I, I mean let I guess let me get them there's no reason why let me get all the project requests you know printed on paper get them to Brian and then we'll discuss it again maybe at your next meeting. Okay, should be a quick discussion then, huh? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. Thanks Keith. Good, great work. Thank you Keith. Yeah, thanks. Brian, do you want me to elaborate on the Christian Lane Bridge, or do you did you submit yeah. that? I think so, right, Jonathan? You want yeah. to do that now? Yeah, we have a letter, um, a, 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 a written public comment that Joyce alluded to earlier, um, looking seeking um, an understanding of the status and future plans for for repair of the um, the, the Christian Lane Bridge and the and the one main um, barriers that are that are up currently. So Keith, you want to give an update so that people in town know that we are um, actually on the ball? Sure. Uh, you know, I, I think you all have, uh, Brian had given, I gave a report to Brian to see to it that you all got, that I did back up in, in January of this year. You know, and, and just to summarize my report, there's 5,000 229 bridges in the state of Massachusetts. And presently, there are 472 bridges that are classified as structurally deficient. Um, unfortunately, Christian Lane, even with the lane closure, is not considered to be structurally deficient. There are many aspects to what goes into a bridge rating to determine how severe it is and in the case of our bridge um, it is not and it and at the time of my report that i did christian lane bridge was ranked 3383 out of the 5229 now that doesn't mean that it'll every bridge under us like 3382 bridges need to be done before ours but at the same point in time, that's where it is at the moment in the eyes of the state to get any funding through the bridge repair program. So as we go forward, as, as the bridge becomes more deteriorated or anything else does happen to it, it can jump, you know, it can leapfrog other bridges if, if the conditions warrant it. So, um, you know, Basically, what I'm trying to explain is from the discussion I had with Mass DOT is plan on this for quite a few years. Um, I would almost say you're we're probably looking at probably five to 10 years of a single lane bridge before it would even come close to being eligible to seeing 
funding. Um, I know that's not what a lot of people like to hear, but mm -hmm. consider it, consider this, that the, the same, the vehicle that was able to drive over it when it was two lanes back last year, the bridge posting has not changed. The same exact vehicles that could drive over it then can drive over it now. And another thing that is a big drawback to our bridge moving up the ladder, so to speak, is it's a very short and, in, and not, a, not a huge inconvenience to take another route, whether it be Swamp Road or Clavert Road. Now, uh, I realize that the people who live on those two roads don't want to see an increase in traffic, but it's the nature of of where we're at with it. Um, when we've got all these um, so many other bridges that are far far worse than ours, it's not it, it's just not going to go anywhere real quick. Um, I, think, I think the public gets frustrated when they 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 know we were mandated to close it, but at the same time, the bridge is not considered structurally deficient. Um, and I think there's a, in a lot of people's minds, there's a disconnect there. Yeah, and I mean, to elaborate a little bit more, because certainly the, the general public doesn't know what the problem was. And the problem is, is that um, that bridge has piles under it, which I guess a good way to explain it is, cons there's telephone poles per se, that have been pounded down into the soil that are nothing more than a, really look just like a, a utility pole. They're, they're pressure, they're, I mean, not pressure treated, but they're creosoted poles that were pounded into the ground. And there's three, three rows of seven of each of us. So there's 21 piles that are supporting the center of the bridge and the piles on the upstream side, the part that's closed are deteriorated so bad at the, at the water level that they just cannot care. They don't have the load bearing capacity that they should have. Um, I discussed with MassDOT to, to intervene and do some type of, of repair on them. And just to go in and do some type of repair where I would have to um, encapsulate them and pour concrete around them. Um, by the time we get through the environmental permits, um, that area of Mill River has the endangered species in it, the, the orc wedge mussel. The, the expense of us to try to do something would be in the millions. And it would not, Again, the only option we have at the moment is to spend town money to do that because the state's not going to give us money to do it because it's not considered to be bad. So um, I don't feel that the town of Waitley is in the position to spend, you know, in excess of a million dollars to fix that bridge on our own out of, at taxpayers' cost. And so that's why I feel we have to wait until the state says it's eligible for replacement. And this bridge would not qualify as uh, under the small bridge grant program. No, that again, the the small program that's bridges that are only a t less than a twenty foot span. Yeah, any bridge mm -hmm. that's over a twenty foot span is eligible for federal funds. And, and and at the same point in time, with the current you know administration at the federal level dumping in lots of money. There is possibilities that they will start to turn out more and get caught up on things so that the, we may not have to wait as long. But right now, based on, on previous, you know, the way things have gone, we got to plan on this being done that way for quite a few years. Okay. Uh, might it help us down the, to get some of those federal funds? To, and I don't know what the cost on this would be to get plans in place so we've got what they would term a shovel ready project. Rather uh, Fred, than just... again, that, that would mean, mm. I, I would, I'd almost estimate the engineering alone on this probably somewhere in the four to $500,000 range, might be my guess. It, mm. This isn't, you know, when you're talking bridges, 
Um, it's just like the price tag on Haydenville Road project, Haydenville Road tip is at $10 million. Um, the engineering on that was, um, you know, maybe the engineering wouldn't be a half a million, but it's certainly going to be well over a hundred thousand okay. dollars. We're spending, I've... we're spending a over a hundred or just about a hundred thousand dollars in a grant to design and engineer the, the culvert on Christian Lane by Castaways. Okay. okay. We, there was a grant. We we were able to get a grant for that for the engineering costs right. on that. I'm mm -hmm. I'm just trying to figure out if there's another way to pay for this. Yeah. Yeah. What I'm, so what I'm hearing is the the way conditions are now, we're three thousand and something on the list. Mm -hmm. We might it might be the case that we can leapfrog over some others depending on conditions, but it, Sounds like it's also equally likely that we could be other bridges could be leapfrogging over us if there's conditions are more serious. But at some point when the conditions get really, really serious, that we should float to the top. And you're if I remember right from the uh, documents you provided in our meeting materials, it's just something like on the seven to ten year timeline. Right. Right. <clears throat> We just have to hope that uh, perhaps the infrastructure bill passes. <clears throat> but in the meantime, yeah. I think we need to move on to the center school. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. Is there anything else, Brian, that you need before I, in your town administrator update that you need me for? Um, I'll just, if I could jump ahead for, for a second yeah. um, and I let, let, let the board know about this. So I, I was attending the the Franklin uh, County Transportation Planning Organization meeting to um, see what was going to happen with the Haydenville Road project in terms of construction years or proposed, you know, years for federal funding, which we had talked about at a previous meeting, whether the project was going to get moved up or, or, or stay where it was in terms of its placement with other projects. And it seemed to me that their preference was that that project, the Haydenville Road project stay planned for construction in its 25, right, Keith, I think? Federal fiscal year 25. Um, and they were going to keep the project that they had concerns about in orange um, in federal year, uh, federal fiscal year 24. But what that created was a gap in their in their plan for, for um, federal fiscal year 23. Um, it turns out that there's um, going to be around somewhere in the ballpark of $4 million. That's what's called unprogrammed monies federal highway monies that the region will get um, that they don't have a project to spend on. Um, so when I was sitting there, it occurred to me that um, the Christian Lane culvert replacement project that we've been working on is probably, a, it is in my opinion, a really competitive project um, that we should submit to uh, the COG and try to get that fund and try to get funded. Um, the preliminary estimates from our engineer for that project are, and this is again, a culvert replacement project is between 1.7 and $1.8 million. Um, so um, if things are ridiculously expensive um, in terms of infrastructure and it fits all, it fits all of the things that they're looking for projects. We'll, we'll have a, uh, we'll have a design completed uh, by January of uh, 2022. So we'll have design in place. We'll still have to do permitting there's no right away issues, so um, I would um, recommend that the board would would submit a, you know a letter to to mm. Perkoff okay. to move forward with this project. Okay, you said January 2022, just now. Uh, the design will be done in June 2022. Okay. So the design for oh, the project, 100% okay. design, we should reach in April, May. Yeah, in the three okay. months. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I thought January was a little early. But yeah. I probably heard that wrong. Or I spoke it wrong. I don't know which one. You're looking for a vote on that, Brian? I think it would be good if we vote to submit a letter of support for that project, yeah. We move we vote to send a letter of support for the uh, culvert project. Second. All those in favor, Joyce? Aye. Fred? Yes. Me, yes. Okay, let me know when that's ready. It'll be right next to the warrants. 
Okay. <laughs> Can't wait. I'll, I'll bring a pen with extra ink. Okay, here too early though. I gotta type it. We have culverts all over the town to work in the way they're supposed to. All right. Um, can we go to the center school now and let Keith go have dinner? Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Center school, Brian. Um, so we have, uh, as uh, I think everybody knows, there's a separate uh, insurance policy for the center school. Um, and it, we have to renew it. Uh, and we have to renew it very soon. Um, so if we want to renew that, they can uh, make I'll see, I think it'd be a good idea if we're going to hold on to it. It's the cheapest way to avoid excessive problems. It, I mean, it's unfortunate that we, we haven't found a problem in the last year, but or I haven't found a solution, I should say, in the last year. But Yeah, so. yeah um, does this require a motion? I don't think we, we don't have a choice, so I don't see the reason of, oh, to, to, to belabor it with a debate. I don't have a debate to offer. Yeah, I don't either. I wish no, you did. Move, move we renew the insurance policy for the center school. Second. All those in favor, Fred? Yes. Joyce? Aye. Me, yes. All right. Town of Minister updates, Brian? And just go back to E above. Um, oh, the sorry. various town boards, yeah. If, if Jonathan, if you remember at the, the, one of the recent finance yeah. committee meetings, there were concerns about the composition of the personnel committee and you thought about adding a agenda item to um, talk about that and maybe other things. I, I think it's an opportunity for us to visit how each board committee commission in town um, is is comprised. Is is the composition correct and how is it comprised? Are, are both valid um, discussions to, to take on. Um, if, and if we're gonna do it for, for an operative word there is if, if we're gonna do it for one committee, then we should do it for, it all, for them all. And you can make a good argument that, that we need to revisit how these things are put together because they were put together a very long time ago and it is the 21st century today. So I would like to suggest that, I can't believe I'm saying this, that a committee of some kind, a working group, let's call it, um, put together um, a, a series of meetings to assess how these types of committees, commissions, boards are, are, are put together uh, and what their composition is uh, in, in other towns um, and, and to come back to town meeting in 2023 with a recommendation of any changes or, um, or non-changes. But I, I think it is, a, it, is, it is a good opportunity to, to, to make sure that, that we are, we're in the 21st century. And I'm not, I'm not sure we are right now. You know, and, and I and I and I, if if we're going to do one board, and, and you know, and, and again, I don't know how much momentum or enthusiasm there was for, for the for the personnel committee, um, in, in terms of taking a look at that, but we should we should do them all. What would you contemplate the makeup of this committee to be? Um, I would suggest perhaps um, representatives from certainly this board. Uh, representatives from the um oh my gosh i can't believe um joyce help me what's what? that role again moderator <laughs> yes thank you um um you know a, a representative or two from the moderator and a representative or, or two from you know make it make sure that the committee is is represented from a cross section of the population rather than just the section of the population that 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 we know, or that the moderator knows, or that the finance mm -hmm. committee knows, or 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 whomever, yeah. um, bring in and you know wh whatever. So my first take would be maybe four people from us and three people from the moderator, and and because we're the two work. I don't think there are, and maybe one from the maybe someone from um, 
from the town clerk's office because there are some commissions that that are that are voted um and and so three three and one so we have an odd an odd number of people um and and, and do it that way um, because i think those are the three entities in town that are responsible for creating um the the the, the members of boards commission and committees the select board the moderator mm -hmm. And obviously, elect the election ballot. Maybe nothing changes. Maybe it does change. Huh? But 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 I think it's I think it's a, I think it's a, a good exercise. I I'm not sure I agree that that's where we should be putting our efforts. I think there's a lot of much ado about nothing. I think there's some sour grapes because one particular person on one particular committee was a nay vote on something where everyone else on the committee agreed. And they're just, you know, they're just upset that they didn't get their way and they think there's some cabal of people who are voting against them somehow because they don't agree. <laughs> um, but I, you know, having, having been sat on that committee, I think the committee's composed in a very balanced way. Um, and, and I think, I think the, the thing that has started this is, is very much much ado about nothing. And to put in that much time and effort, uh, given all of the other things that we're trying to do in our town, I, I don't think that's where the effort is deserved. I think if we could do more with our housing committee, if we could do more, like we have lots of committees that just don't have enough volunteers. And I think this particular one, if it, you know, if somebody has a gripe about how some committee is put together, let's talk about that. But then we, then let's just have a real conversation about how is that committee put together and would they like it to be put together a different way? I think that's a reasonable conversation to have. But to say because there's a gripe about one committee that we need to overhaul the entire uh, set, you know, composition of all the committees, I think that's a lot of effort with very little payback. And we've got better things to do to try and get grants, to try and make progress on things that are already on our plates. That's that's my thoughts at this point. And I I, I would agree. I think the bigger problem is not necessarily the composition of the committees it's lack of people to serve on some of these committees and you know finding a way to motivate more people to get involved on them rather than worrying about who appoints them i i, I would i i get your perspectives um but mm -hmm. I'll, I'll use and i think i've said it to each of you guys um i'll, I'll use i'll use and, and forget current people who are in current roles, because who's in mm -hmm. role right now, be they us or what, it doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's the body that's more important than the personalities. Um, I, I've thought for, for a very long time that one person should not have the ability to appoint um, all the positions to the two most powerful committees in town. You know, finance and planning are the two most powerful committees in town that impact the most people. And by the way, I think that that's that they have more authority than than we do as a select board. Um, and one person, one person um, who can- I don't think there's any complaints about that at the moment, other than yours. Well, I know I've heard many complaints about it over the years because you get you get you get the same type of person serving. And if the person serves long enough, you get the same because you don't know everyone. You know a, a faction of a, of a of a community, and so when one person's in that role, you get X type of person. When another person's in the role, you get Y type mm -hmm. of person. You never get a cross section of the community, or you run the risk of it. And and again, there are people who can be in, in this in these positions for you know 20, 30 years. So why not take a look at how we do things and how we run this town? Because it's competing against other needs. 
Yeah, it's, it's competing for time and attention with so many other things. It would be a lower priority for me, especially given that it's not, it's not a, you're, you mentioned the two committees that the moderator appoints. This complaint is not coming from either of those. It's coming from a very specific committee that gets its appointments from various places. Uh, it already has very good representation from various parts of the town. So I, I don't, I, I, I see that what's motivating this is, is not really a, a, a bid to make our committees more diverse. I think at this point, anybody who sat up and volunteered would be completely considered for any of those committees that, that you mentioned. Uh, the truth is it's really hard to find well-qualified yeah. volunteers for either of those two committees because they require so much technical support. Now, part of that is being addressed by Hannah being there to help out the planning committee. That I think makes a big difference and it kind of opens up um, a, a kind of a wider range of people who could, who could go there. But boy, I, I just think we have so many other things that are much more important that's all. Okay. I just I, I I wanted to raise it. I I, I stand by what I said, um, but if you guys aren't aren't of the same mind, that's fine. That's why we have three people, and that's democracy. That's fine. But but I, I do, you know, it it it, it I, I think taking a look at it might also expand the number of people who suddenly say, yeah, I, I do want to be involved, and um, I, I I just no one can know everybody in town and. You, you never know whether you might find more people to volunteer because we do take a look at it. Maybe nothing changes. Maybe a lot changes, but you don't mm -hmm. know until you, you, you take a look at it. But that's up to you guys. That's fine. I, I just wanted to raise it. it it's something that's- yeah, I, I just don't see it as a priority right now. Okay. All right. I, I'm, I, I'm not hearing the complaints or problems. Well, Fred, I've heard, I've heard complaints about a lot of committees just because the, you know, because, because the committees get very the committee takes on a personality of its own based upon the people who are on it and 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 when it's the same people being appointed over and over the same mm -hmm. type of people being appointed over and over again you don't get a cross representation of, of, right. of the town that that's my but but, but if you ask those same people would they like to be appointed they will say mm -hmm. not in a million years Perhaps. so that and and th that has been my experience. Um, so I, I, you know, yeah, I, 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 I haven't been here. Right I haven't heard, and I don't know if you've heard of any people who are clamoring to be on committees who have been rejected repeatedly. No, it's not. It's not those people. It's not the people who have been rejected. It's the people who look at a, look at the makeup of a committee and say. It is a cross section of a small, very small um, mm -hmm. graphic part of the town or, or, or personality type of the town. It's not, the, the complaints don't come from people who want to serve. The complaints come from, the concern comes from people who just don't see a cross representation, but that's fine. Let's I, not, well, the, 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 the subset of people in town who are willing to serve is sure. pretty small. So yeah, if we're, we're, we're a here, small town with a small number of people within that town, who are willing to put in this kind of time. Which is unfortunate. Yep. Okay, let's move on then, that's fine. Um, can I start updates, Brian? Do we have do we have a lot of them? Uh, just a couple of things to fill you in on. Uh, police station septic repairs, the bids are due tomorrow. Again, that's to replace the, the main waistline from the building out to the, to the septic tank um, that has failed. Um, I had a suggestion from the, I guess she's now outgoing Franklin County Chamber Director, right? I think Diana's sleeping. Um, so she was wondering if the town wanted to join the chamber. Um, I really haven't had a chance to look into it. I don't know if that's something that you want me to look into. I don't know that there's actual, an actual I don't benefit think we get doing a lot so. benefit from that, do we? I, I, I don't, not that I know of. <laughs> I didn't know that Diana was leaving. That's too bad. Yeah, I think she was. I, I think I read something the, the other day. I think she's going to some some regional chamber of commerce 
in maybe Hampshire, Hampton, and somewhere I expect that. Um, so I, I think maybe we'll just we'll just pass for that. Um, unless you guys feel strongly otherwise. Um, Jonathan, the Board of Oversight is going to be hiring an outreach coordinator position in the near future, right? Yep. My understanding. Uh, so if anybody's interested in a, um, it's still 10, 15 hours, I think, part-time position with the with the center. Um, yeah, and it, and it is outreach to seniors to get them, to make sure we know what their needs are, to make sure we know um, what people have for interests. Um, you know, again, we're, we're, we're making sure that we, we, we reach people who, who perhaps need to be reached, but uh, either they don't want to be reached or, um, you know, for whatever reason. But it's, it's a position that's been in place for, for um, a number of years, but it has been vacant um, for, for, for a while now, and, and it's an important position. So if anybody's interested, um, they should reach out to the director of the senior center. And then the last thing here I have, um, Fred, do you want me to fill in uh, Joyce and Jonathan on our meeting with the fire department? Or do you want to do that? Uh, you can do it and I'll pipe in if necessary. So um, there was, so based on our um, discussions at the last meeting with the, you know, the fire chief facing mandatory retirement in 2023, we wanted to sort of have two discussions, right? One was sort of a, a shorter term focus and then a longer term focus. and. I think our meeting that we, so Fred, myself, uh, John Han, I mean, the officers of the fire department met um, last, was it, it was last week? Yeah, last Monday. week. Yeah, last, um, week. last Monday. Um, and we just sort of had a discussion about, you know, about the fire department and its future and, and, and things like that. Um, and I guess what came out of it is they're gonna, they're gonna get back to us. They're gonna get back to the board. Um, with, um, I, I guess, sort of their, prefer, their preferred organizational structure and how they see the, the fire department, if it were to, um, you know, how it's gonna operate, at least for the next couple of years, um, what changes, if anything, should be made, those types of things. Because I, I think in reality, if, if we're going to look somewhere else outside the town, it's gonna be a, a multi-year process, as I think the board discussed last time. Um, so we're hoping it gets, you know, some information from them by, um, Fred, I think we said November. Yeah, right? I think we, we gave, they'll be back to us by November 1st with an organizational plan, which is also for budgetary reasons to give us an idea of do we need to fund deputy chief positions or other, you know, and to what level we'll need to try to fund the chief position after John leaves. So short term though, right, Fred? That that that's that's the short term issue, and then there's still going to be long term, longer term discussions about you know what we do about fire coverage. But right. first things first, we had to deal with the short term mm -hmm. transition. But but the long term discussion should not be driven necessarily by the fire department. The long-term discussion is difficult because I agree it shouldn't be driven by the fire department, but it will have to be tremendously informed by the fire department. Of, of course, but if, if and, and I say this with incredible respect for, for people who were absolutely on the other side of the discussion about ambulance than, than the winning side. Um, if if the discussion around the regionalization of the ambulance had been driven by the three ambulances, uh, three town ambulance departments, it would have never happened um, because there's a passion there and, and there's a, you know, it's, it's your child. Um, so I, I, I very much think we need to have the conversation about regionalizing the fire. Um, and I, and I get, we're talking about someone's child and that's tough, but the conversation should take place. Whether something happens or not, that's a, a whole other kettle of fish. Mm -hmm. But but we need to have an informed discussion from, from that includes outside experts and includes yeah. and incorporates the, the the beliefs and the experiences and the passions of 
um, not just the Whitley Fire Department, but but other fire departments that may choose to to, to get involved. Because the reality is, right now, um, if if there's a fire, about seven communities show up anyway. And the reality is is that um, all these all these towns, they all have a hook and ladder, and they all have a pumper, and they all have all these things. And we each town doesn't need all those things because seven towns show up to a fire anyway. So yeah, I, no, it's a it's a discussion which we need to have and set up, as you say, with outside experts, with other opinions. But first things first, we need to deal with the short term. That will not be settled by next year. Clearly, right? A absolutely. I just don't want I just don't want the short term to 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 forever dominate uh, the the pushing hand down the road in the long term no we, we we went into the discussion and one of the first things i said was we've got two issues here we've got a short-term issue we've got a long-term issue and yes we have to deal with the short term first but we have to deal with the other issue as well yeah. a, a fire truck costs four five hundred thousand dollars one truck right uh how does that longer term i mean maybe you don't know this answer yet but how does that longer term conversation get started i i feel like i wasn't there at the very start of the um the ambulance discussion but it was pretty close to the start day <clears throat> i feel like it started with hiring a <coughs> excuse me hiring someone who knew about regionalization of ambulance services or other public services doing a study. <clears throat> so it seems like if we want to have data uh, to make a decision, which I think is what that consultant really did, was gave looked at the big picture financial um, outlook, like could this thing ever be self-sustaining? Um, and, and that was a really important part. Like, how does that get off the ground? It, it was that, that is, it sounds like it, it's not a short term thing, it's a longer term thing. But do I we think have that's something idea? we would have to get up? Yeah, we have to get it yeah, off the ground. Bit. Yeah, and and well, I probably didn't come up at your meeting quite yet, but I guess I was just wondering do we have an idea with the people in the room here? How how do you get that? I, I mean, I was, I was there, the it, was, it was, yeah, um, it was funded by the COG, uh, in terms of okay. study. Uh, a guy by the name of Bruce Baxter and Associates was 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 hired. Mm -hmm. um, he did not have the template in mind that we eventually created, but he talked about data. He talked about you know response mm -hmm. yeah. and all these mm -hmm. kinds of things. Um, and it was it was fascinating. It was they were tough conversations sometimes, um, but yeah. mm -hmm. it was it was cog funded to 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 get that going. And I think we need to. I think we need to do it again. I think the the, the select mm -hmm. boards from each of the three towns or four towns, however many it is, um, need to get together and say, "Hey, how can we go through a similar process and um, bring mm -hmm. in Linda Dunlavy um, to see how they can help us make right. this happen?" So, is this like a technical assistance grant? Is it? I mean, I uh, on, on, at on some point it's on yeah. steroids. Yeah. No, but ultimately, I think this board has to drive it, at least from Waitley's standpoint. Mm -hmm. And you know, Joyce says how it gets off the ground. We get it off the ground. We get it off the ground. We have to get that that first uh, tranche of data, um, or right. that first grant for it to be studied, or the first I don't know. Pick a right. pick a town that abuts our town, and uh, um, yeah, there, there there are all kinds of <clears throat> options that you know once you get looking at it mm -hmm. you know as far as towns involved are we talking about a regional fire system are we talking about us contracting to just another department and saying you know we'll pay you money you deal with our fires mm -hmm. I, I i wouldn't i wouldn't suggest that i mean i would I, <laughs> right. the ambulance I, I'm, I'm just saying that that's scams is one of the best things that's been created in this town in 20 years yeah and 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 mm -hmm. and I don't think that's up for argument. I mean, it is an incredible operation, yeah. and and every other regional operation in the region says, you know, the Highland Ambulance, you guys did it right. 
you guys absolutely did it right. And, mm -hmm. and I'm yeah. not saying exact because there are fire districts involved and all that kind of stuff, but um, it, the, to get it off the ground, you need cooperation from mm -hmm. at least the three towns that make up scams to say, yeah, let's have this conversation around, yeah. um, around fire. No, I think I think scams should get the fire truck. I mean, you know, <laughs> because uh, scams FD or something. I, I, I that's just a little uh, uh, off the cuff, but yeah, let, let's look for opportunities for that kind of a grant so that we can. We right. can I think that that that's what we have to do. Is if if we're if this board is going to be the impetus for it, not just in the town but on a regional basis. Let's look for grants and then we'll see where, yeah. where we can go from there. Yeah. Well, let's just, I, again, I, I don't I know, know that we want to fund the whole thing out of our budget. No, we won't. We, we, we shouldn't. It should be a shared yeah. with the other right. towns. And I know the other towns would jump on board with, with, the, with the research piece. I, I know they would. Yeah. So um, anything else, Brian? Because I do have a, my hard stop at, at 8 o'clock. I'm all set. Um, and forgive me, but um, unless anybody wants to, to to take over, I would uh, I would um... I move to adjourn. Okay. Uh, well, I've got one question. Next meeting, do we want to be hybrid or how do we want to conduct it? I would like to be able to continue remote as long as possible. This semester, especially April, it's a crazy month, and uh, we, we've, we've been asking our other committees and boards. To, to do hybrid at this point should we I, do that we've been asking them to consider all options but i don't care whether they go hybrid or they stay completely remote. yeah I, I, I don't i don't think we've been pushing one way or the other just that we require you have a remote uh a remote access okay possibility so i guess if, if there's somebody here who would really like to be in person with brian there uh clearly the technology works um, I don't think we should uh, we should forbid it, but uh, I don't feel like we need to require well, it's it. It's a question either. of how, how the meeting gets noticed. Yeah, I mean, to if whether you want to make it hybrid, that's great. I'm going to do it from where I'm sitting for the foreseeable future. And probably I would join remotely as well, but I don't have any objection to making it hybrid so that other people who would rather be in person can be there in person. None at all. Okay. Yeah. All right, so Brian, if you want to make it hybrid option, that's great. Do we? I'll entertain a motion. Move we make the meetings hybrid option. I'll all second right. that. All those in favor? You got to roll call us. We're still. Right. Aye. Aye. Right. Me. Aye. Okay. Right. Motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Joyce. Aye. Fred. Aye. Me. Thank you very much, you guys. Have a great night.